today I graduated in adulting and I finally got my Massachusetts driver's license. I'm officially a resident of Massachusetts. It only took three years. And I just didn't know if I was going to stay here or not. And uh, But I'm done with that whole absentee ballot. Blah. So I also got officially registered um, as a voter in Massachusetts. So now I can vote like a normal human being instead of having to mail in all this paperwork and crap. Uh, you know, gotta, you know, act. Not just talk about what you believe in, right? So, yeah, cutting it a little close, October 13th, but yeah, it is what it is. That I would make a video explaining what exactly I'm voting for and why it was so important for me to register as a voter in Massachusetts um, instead of just sending in an absentee ballot from uh, for New York. So, um, if you guys don't know, I moved out of New York. I moved off of Long Island in... 2010 and in Massachusetts like it just seems like I'm, I'm gonna be here for a while like even if I go travel um I'm gonna end up back here and I'm really a lot more involved in this community than I have been anywhere else even in Connecticut when I, I felt very um involved in the artist community there I also didn't feel quite right voting um voting for policies in Connecticut um and I do here well, what does that mean? You're not just voting for president uh, when you go in to vote, right? And that's obviously really important. Um, but I'd argue that just even more importantly is what you're voting for at a lower lower level, more local level, because that's actually what's going to affect you. And it's the people at the lower levels that build up towards who's going to actually be voting for president because I'm not going to get into it here. You can look it up, but uh, we don't have a popular vote or rather it doesn't really matter that much who you vote for president. Like I can vote for whoever I want and ultimately Massachusetts is a democratic state. So much more importantly is the questions in your actual state. So there's four questions in Massachusetts. And I'll just go in order because they, that, they set it up real nice for me. So the first question has to do with gambling. Um, a vote yes would allow for 12, like 1,200 to 1,300 slot machines in like one location. Um, so a casino. Um, and I personally, like, I'm totally against that. Like, I can't, I just don't see how any good could come of it. Um, the argument for them is that it'll bring in more money. But me, like, I'm not motivated by money, obviously. I'm a yoga instructor <laughs> and an artist. Like, I'm invested in my community and the well-being for it. And I'm invested in the people that I love having enough money to survive, not rich people getting richer at the casinos at the expense of the impoverished throwing off their like savings and I think it's a really irresponsible pastime obviously that's super judgy um and yeah I'm definitely vote when it comes to this like I'm definitely voting from a point of this is just my opinion like I'm against gambling so so I'm gonna vote against it because I just see more alcoholism and more gambling addictions coming from it in my community Woods, Mohegan Sun is really not that far from here. Why well, compete with the people who are already doing it and dealing with repercussions instead of bringing all the problems here? And you know, if you don't have enough money to go to Connecticut one state away and gamble there, then we have no business building one in your backyard. That's my opinion on that one. Then question number two is really tricky for me. Uh, charter school expansion, a yes on this. It would allow for more rapid expansion of charter schools being built or more rapid expansion of the charter schools already built just to have more kids in them. This is difficult for me because I don't, I don't have children and my friends that do have children, they're not old enough to go to school yet for the most part. I do believe in education reform. Uh, charter schools are public schools. They're not private schools, although they are um, privately like organized uh, I think I'm 
I think that it makes sense to have more options for our kids. Like there's huge, wait, there's like tens of thousands of kids on a waiting list just in Massachusetts trying to get into charter schools. So if there's demand, then we should apply, we should supply more people with that option. Within the next couple of weeks, um, I'm going to see who I can speak to, like on a one-on-one -on -one basis to see what they think. But right now I am voting yes to expand and allow for more. Okay. Question number three is a no brainer for me. Absolutely. This is one of the, this is basically the reason that I registered to vote in Massachusetts instead of sending in an absentee ballot. Um, a yes would prohibit any confinement of pigs, calves, and hens and that prevents them from lying down, standing up, fully extending their limbs, or turning around freely. This is a no-brainer to me. This is the bare minimum in animal like handling that there possibly could be. Like the fact that we still have we have animals in cages tiny enough that they'll never be able to lay down in their living lives is atrocious and like honestly heartbreaking and thinking that you could eat those animals or their products their milk and their eggs and like that that would somehow be healthy is fucking delusional like that's crazy and like I'm not a vegan like I ate eggs and cheese and whatnot and like yeah I do buy cage-free um cage-free uh eggs and it is more expensive. So that's one of the things against it. It's like, oh, it's going to make everything more expensive because like these animals are going to need like six, like a few more inches or a couple more feet to roam around or even turn around. Um, and that's going to cost more money. So the product is going to cost more money. Well, yeah, it does. But if that becomes the standard, it's going to regulate itself. Like right now, cage-free eggs are like probably twice as much expensive as regular conventional eggs. But once cage free becomes the convention, like the conventional, it's gonna even out. It's gonna become affordable for everybody because that's the way the market works, right? And that's what we learned in economics class. So it's going to help regulate prices if this is normalized. And so I think it's really exciting that something like this is in that we're like able to vote on it, um, and it's not up to like the EPA and the um, FDA and like I don't trust any I don't know those people I don't trust them like we should be deciding what we allow in our supermarkets what we allow in our restaurants um, so obviously I'm voting yes on three and the last question the most scandalous question is the legalization of marijuana a yes to this would allow people 21 and over to possess, use, and transfer I mean, marijuana as products containing uh, marijuana concentrate, include so like brownies and whatnot, um, and to cultivate marijuana so we could like grow it in our yards um, in limited amounts. I'm like, it's an obvious yes for me. And that's not even coming from so like, I don't really, I don't smoke and um, I did a lot in college. But I don't, I don't, I don't have time to be like in altered states of, of uh, attention. I, I don't drink regularly at all, probably like twice a month. Um, and even when it comes to pot, I have nothing against it. I just, I don't, I just don't have time to be high. I can't sacrifice an hour, three hours, or whatever. <laughs> the point is that it's really like not about me. There's. She seems to me that there's so many reasons to just legalize it. Um, if people can buy Tylenol at CVS for a headache, then they should be able to grow their own pot and use that as medicine for themselves. You shouldn't have to um, need to get a license to have access to marijuana, which is like a, a medicinal plant. And they might as well tax it and make money off of it. Not just that, but a lot of time is taken up by the police department tracking down low-level pot smokers and, and pot dealers. Like, we have a huge opioid problem in the country in general, but especially here. Um, those, are, those are what we have to be finding. We have to be tracking down internet sales of fucking heroin substitutes. Like, we have to be 
um, dealing with people selling crack on the streets and all the syringes that I find when I'm walking my dog um, up by the liquor store. Like, we should be f finding <laughs> ways to stop uh, that from coming into our community um, as opposed to, you know, busting 17-year-olds for rolling a joint. That's a space in our in our jail cells, it's a waste of time for our courtrooms, um, and honestly it's like a stain on a lot of people's records that is just completely unnecessary. That's how I feel about that, that's why I think it should be legalized. These are the four ballot questions in Massachusetts that I'll be voting on. Oh right, and obviously who I'm voting for when it comes to president. I'm not gonna lie. I cried during the Democratic convention when Bernie Sanders spoke. Like, to me, like, he, it was the first time an adult in a position of power spoke in a way that I felt like, wow, this person actually hears me and cares about the things I care about. He's talking about how student loans are destroying the economy because an entire generation is handcuffed to what the decision to follow what everyone told us to do, to go to college and to spend these exorbitant amounts of money and take out these huge loans to do it and then we get out and, you know, this. Climate change is a, is a thing, but that we need to take steps in order to fix it. Like, it's our responsibility. This weather isn't just, oh, wow, this has just been a really bad year. It's like a record bad year for droughts and for flooding and for this and that. Okay, accepting that there's a correlation is 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 the bare minimum and he was ready to actually make change for that and he invited people from the black lives matter movement up on stage with him he like allowed there to be a conversation and when you go back and back and back since like the 60s and 70s this man's been actually living up to what he said he believed in and yeah just to see him endorse hillary clinton felt like like heartbreaking honestly like wow we got so far and like maybe somebody was going to hear what we care about and uh it was like very validating like instead of being like wow I'm just this crazy person who cares about the you know the earth and I care about my generation like not being in, in crippling debt and you know I care about transgender lives and uh, equal liberties for all, and I want to work towards ending, demolishing institutionalized racism, and here's this person who believes all of that, and just to see him be like, well, now, <sighs> just to see that end was, was hard. Yeah, but I won't just say that I'm voting for Hillary Clinton because it's the lesser of two evils, and oh, if I really have to, it's like, yeah, I would vote for Bernie Sanders if he was <laughs> again and again and again uh, until you made it there. But um, but he's not running, so that's the reality of the situation. And Hillary Clinton has, uh, you know, actually a lot of good points, and she knows what she's doing. She's actually qualified for this job, and I think that it is what it is, and that I think that she will be a good president. And I hope so. Definitely go out and vote. Educate yourself. Like, don't just vote how your, you know, husband is voting. Like, don't just vote how your best friend is voting. Um, don't just vote how I'm voting. Like, you should go out and like actually care because it does like affect your life.